Top Tip Tuesday time again. It's Bob here from Insidium. Hello. And today we're going to jump into mesh tools and I'm going to show you how we can firstly animate mesh tools in a procedural way to get a cool kind of abstract bit of animating geo. But we're going to make it look more organic even though it's a geometric object by using X particles dynamics. So let's start that clock. In our scene, we have this uh, sphere primitive, and the only thing we've changed is we've put it on icosahedron type to get these nice regular triangles. So let's start with our Insidia menu, Mesh Tools, and we'll bring in a subdivider. We'll make a sphere a child of the subdivider, and by default, we get one level of subdivision. Let's put this up to, say, five, so it's really dense, but we'll drive this subdivision using a shader. So we'll go to Shader, bring in a Noise, Let's click on the noise thumbnail for the settings. We'll change the noise type to box and we'll just add a bit of contrast by reducing this high clip. And now we have this very unevenly subdivided bit of geometry. Right, so now we're going to get our kind of moving spikes by using an inset. So we'll go to Insidium Mesh Tools, bring in an uh, inset, put our subdivider as a child of the inset. And now in the inset object tab, if we increase the amount, Every poly gets an inset poly, so an inner face and some outer faces. And then if we increase the offset of those, they stick out a little bit like spikes, something like this. So now we have this very um, kind of tactile looking bit of geo. So we're going to animate this to get some nice movement using a field. So if we go to the inset fields tab, we can bring in a random field which will use a noise. So in the field tab of our random field, we'll keep the noise type on Perlin, but we'll change the scale. We're gonna ramp this way up, and you can see we're increasing the size of that noise. Let's put it on, say, 530. And then let's give it an animation speed of, say, 20%. And now if we hit play, you'll see that as that noise animates, so does um, our insets and we're getting this kind of wobbly look and if we go to our inset object tab just increase that offset amount it'll just make it a little bit more obvious that animation yeah look so you can see it rippling so this looks cool but the underlying sphere is completely static so it still doesn't look that organic really so let's uh, get that set up we'll switch off all of our mesh tools stuff to reveal just the sphere underneath and we're going to make this dynamic so with it highlighted, we're going to go to Tags, and we'll go to Extensions, Insidium Tags, and bring in an XP Dynamics. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to add, and under the Properties, we're going to add an emitter. So let's click on that. It brings in an XP emitter. This is going to create the dynamic particles. If I go forward a frame, make the sphere invisible, you can see, look, a particle has been born for every vertex of our object. So if we then manipulate those particles, it will move the underlying object as well. So let's do a couple of things. Um, first of all, we'll bring in a modifier that's going to move those particles around. Let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Modifiers, Motion. Let's bring in a Turbulence. And this, we'll put the scale up to maybe 150, strength up to something like 15. So this is going to move those particles around, which, yes, and then that's moving the sphere. Okay, but it's too rigid at the moment, isn't it? We want it to be all bendy and floppy. So let's go to our Dynamics tag. And with the rigidity, let's reduce that way down to, say, I don't know, 0.5. Hit play. So, yeah, it's a bit more squashy, more like a soft body now. I think we could maybe even go lower. Let's go to 0.1%. So it's going to be really, really floppy. But now the particles are being moved away from the center of our scene. Um, and that's not what we want. So we want to keep them around here. So let's use an attractor to do that. We'll go to Insidium X Particles, Modifiers, Motion, Attractor. Just keep it in its default. And the attractor is trying to attract the particles to the center. And the turbulence is trying to move them around. Uh, but it's kind of, it's breaking up a little bit too much, isn't it? So let's add a little bit of internal pressure into our object. We'll go to our Dynamics tag, and under the pressure, look, let's put this on, say, 0.5. Now when we hit play, that's going to pressurize it slightly. It's a little bit too floppy, isn't it? Let's put our rigidity up again now to maybe 0.4. 
to make it stiffer. Yeah, that's kind of holding it together a bit better, isn't it? And now we have got something that's looking a little bit like it has a life of its own, which is kind of what we want. So now that we have that, if we now activate all of our mesh tools, which is just procedural, it will start having our animation, uh, our mesh tools animation on top of that underlying um, uh, dynamic simulation. So we hit play. Yes, that's starting to look way more interesting, isn't it? Now, what we're able to do is we could actually add a little bit more of a contrast curve to our inset so it's more obvious. If we go to our random field, to the remapping tab, you can see it has this linear remap. But if we go to the contour mode here and change it to curve, it gives us an adjustable curve. And we can crush that noise. We can add loads of contrast, which will make it much more kind of spiky in places and smoother in other places. And there we have gone from what looked like a very kind of rigidly animating mesh tools object to something that does look much more organic and have a life of its own, even though it's a very strict geometric shape.